Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, I'm updating my top five best CPUs list, and it's been quite some time since I updated this series. In fact, the last update came around nine months ago, and since I do try to keep this series updated at least once every six months or so, we are a little late on this one. And I have to say that is a bit surprising because we have had numerous major CPU releases since March, most notably of which has been AMD's third generation Ryzen series. And then more recently we had the third gen Threadripper series and then of course Intel's Cascade Lake X part. So yeah, quite a bit to cover in this update, but before we do get into it, a quick shameless plug. Around here at Hardware Unbox, our thermal paste just keeps getting lost. If only there was some place we could collect it all together. The Hard Run Box mug, now available at store.hardrunbox.com. Okay, so the five categories are best budget CPU, best value all-rounder desktop CPU, best value productivity CPU, best performance gaming CPU, and then of course the best extreme desktop CPU. So let's get into the picks. For the last update, I went with the Ryzen 3 2200G at $100. Today though, it can be had for around $80, which really is a rather good deal. That said, I'd be inclined to spend $10 more and get the 3200G. It comes with a small factory overclock, but more importantly, it is a soldered chip, whereas the 2200G connects to the heat spreader using thermal paste. And this means when using the exact same cooling solution, the 3200G will run a little cooler, and that should help provide a little more overclocking headroom. All that said, for just $120 US, I feel that the Ryzen 5 2400G is the way to go. It includes SMT support for eight threads and that just makes a massive difference and in my opinion is well worth the extra $40 over the 2200G. The 3400G is also a consideration right now at $140 US. Again, when compared to the 2400G, it is a soldered part, it supports PBO and it comes with the upgraded Wraith Spire 95 watt cooler. So at a $10 premium, I would grab the 3400G every time, but at $20 US or more, it does become a tough choice. As for the blue team, well, they really don't have anything to offer here. The Core i3-9100, that comes in at $150, and to be honest, it does get trounced by the Ryzen 5 3400G, especially if you plan on using the integrated graphics. Having said that, if you don't plan on using the iGPU, then the 9100F, that comes in at $90, and for that price, it really isn't a bad deal, but you are buying into a dead platform, which is a bit of a downer. The box cooler also sucks with the Intel processor. There's no CPU overclocking available, and unless you buy a premium Z series motherboard, memory overclocking also isn't possible. So in summary, it's my opinion that the best budget CPU is either the 2400G or the 3400G, depending on pricing in your region. And while the 2200G and 3200G are also very good value, as I said, for what's generally not that much more money, securing SMT support with the 2400G or 3400G is just the way to go. The best value all-rounder desktop CPU has been dominated by the Ryzen 5 2600 for the last few updates, and at the current $120 US asking price, I really could have picked it again. But for what amounts to a $65 premium, I'm going with the newer Ryzen 5 3600. Again, you could really go either way here, and if your budget is tight, then I'd probably suggest getting the Ryzen 5 2600. It is still a very capable part. But when it comes to the latest hardware, the Ryzen 5 3600 is, in my opinion, without question, the best all-rounder. Now, Intel has made some effort to become more competitive here with the Core i5-9400F. They've dropped that down to $160 US, and at that price, it is a bit more compelling, but I think it's just not compelling enough against the Ryzen 5 3600. As I said, with that part, you get twice as many threads, you get superior single core performance and the ability to overclock. So in my opinion, the R5 3600 offers a lot more bang for your buck, even at a $25 premium. Moreover, for budding content creators or really anyone needing to get some serious work done, the 3600 is anywhere from 25 to 60% faster. It's also quite a bit faster in modern games such as The Division 2, Battlefield 5 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider for example. As a final side note, the Ryzen 5 3600X is just $15 US more right now and I'd probably grab it for the better cooler. 
Having said that though, you could probably just pocket that $15 and put it towards a $22 Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, but possibly the small investment in the 3600X is worth it. So that's something you'll have to look into. Um, certainly for US shoppers, at just an 8% premium, I could justify the 3600X, but here in Australia, it's more like a 20% premium, which I really don't think is worth it. Picking the best value productivity CPU has become very difficult, and that's not because Intel's become more competitive uh, with their, say, their Core i9 9900K or the new Cascade Lake X CPUs. That's certainly not the case, and the 9900K, that still costs an insane $530 US. No, the reason is AMD and all their bloody 8-core, 16-thread, and better CPUs. For example, the Ryzen 7 2700X, that can be had for around $200 new right now, and that makes paying $100 more for the 3700X a little tricky. For productivity, the 3700X is around 15 to 20% faster, so yeah, paying 50% more is a little rough. I think for this category, I'm just gonna have to cheat, at least a little bit, and just say that the winner is Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9. And yeah, I know that's not, Super helpful, but it really is the best I can do. It's just become such a broad category now. If you want the best value option, then get the 2700X, assuming you can get them for what amounts to a 33% discount when compared to the 3700X. Here in Australia though, the 2700X is only around 20% cheaper, and that starts to bring the 3700X into play as the best value option. Therefore, I think I'll just say that if second gen Ryzen pricing isn't that great in your region, or you just want the latest tech, then get the 3700X. But I'll also say that if you need a bit more oomph, there's also the Ryzen 9 3900X, and if you need all the oomph, the 3950X, if you can find one in stock. Right now, you're paying a 7% premium per core with the 3900X over the 3700X, but you're also getting four more cores. And then the 3950X comes in at a 13% premium per core. But the biggest issue there really is, as I said, finding one in stock. So good luck tracking down one of those things before Christmas. Okay, so previously I acknowledged the Core i9 9900K as the best gaming CPU, but went ahead and recommended the Core i7 8700K instead, as it offered a similar gaming experience at a much more affordable price point. Still, as I noted previously, if you're after the ultimate gaming setup with a $1,000 plus RTX 2080 Ti, then snapping up a 9900K does make sense. So to reiterate, the best performance gaming CPU is the Core i9-9900K, or I suppose now the limited edition 9900KS, but frankly, I think you're better off ignoring that part, plus at the time of making this video, it's out of stock anyway. The Ryzen 9 3950X is another great option for extreme PC builders, and in my opinion, it's a much better all-round CPU, though it does cost quite a bit more at $750 US, and at the time of making this video, it's also out of stock. Still, for those of you building a gaming PC with seriously high-end hardware, the 9900K does make sense. But for everyone else, I feel like you're better off with something like a Ryzen 5 3600 or R7 3700X, or perhaps even one of the cheaper second-gen parts. After all, performance under realistic conditions is much the same anyway, even with an RTX 2080 Ti. Quite surprisingly, the last time Intel claimed our best extreme desktop CPU pick was way back in June 2017. And at the time I went with the 10 core Core i9-7900X, but did note that the first gen Threadripper parts were just months away from being released and that you probably should wait to see what they had to offer. And sure enough, by the next update, I went with the Threadripper 1950X, and then the following year, the Threadripper 2950X, and then that same part was picked earlier this year in the March update. However, we now have third gen Threadripper, and if you're after the best, most extreme desktop CPU, and I really do have to emphasize extreme there, it's gotta be the 32 core monster that is the 3970X. It's crazy to think just two years ago now, Intel dominated this category, and they would have done so for the 
10 years prior to that as well. Intel had one last go at it with Cascade Lake X and yeah, it, was a, it was a mega flop, I think it's safe to say. I think the world's tech media seems to agree with me on that one based on what I've read elsewhere. So Intel will need to sort out their 10 nanometer process before they can hope to become competitive once more in the HEDT segment, a segment that they basically built. As a quick side note, I recently upgraded my main editing rig with the Threadripper 3960X and boy oh boy is it amazing. Having said that, I'm not sure I'd be super keen to part with $1,400 US just for the CPU and then whatever it takes to buy the high-end TRX40 motherboard and 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, but I think if I did, uh, yeah, like I said, I wouldn't be super keen to do it, but once I had it and seen the resulting performance, I'd probably have no regrets. And yeah, I am super impressed so far. Well, there you have it, my CPU picks as of late 2019. Now. I realize there are a lot of AMD picks here, but I'm not sure what you guys want me to do about that. They really are the best value choices, the best performance choices for a lot of these categories. And even when Intel wins a category, it almost feels like it's sort of a niche use case, kind of like a, a $1,400 and $2,000 Threadripper part. What I mean by that is in the case of the Core i9-1900K, you really are just as well served by the Ryzen 9 3900X for gaming, but when it comes to productivity, the Ryzen CPU is just in a different league. Still, if you're the type of gamer that's going to count every last frame, then the 1900K is probably what you want. Beyond that though, I feel like second and third gen Ryzen have Intel more than covered, while it's unquestionably all AMD for the HEDT market. After years of struggling to compete, I have to admit it is good to see AMD back on top of things, but I do hope Intel can get back on track shortly and that will really benefit all of us. The last thing we want is a role reversal. It sees Intel become the value option and AMD the premium choice. I think instead having both of them locked into fierce competition would be the most ideal scenario. So fingers crossed that's where we are in a few years from now. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you guys found these picks useful and if you happen to agree or disagree with any of the choices, then yeah, feel free to jump down to the comment section below and let us know about it. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.